You're watching CCTV footage of shoplifters from the inside of one of several retailers across the country. And if you've shopped recently in your local Home Depot, Walmart, or CVS, there's a chance your shopping experience was met with the rippling effects of this exact issue. Locked plexiglass panes, motion-sensing monitors, and security cameras placed everywhere. Retailers and retail trade associations are characterizing retail crime as an epidemic. Theft is an issue. It's higher than what it's historically been. If that's not corrected over time, prices will be higher. In 2021, retail shrink, which refers to inventory losses due to theft, unknown loss, and administrative error, accounted for $94.5 billion, as compared to $90.8 billion in 2020. But beneath the surface, there is another side to the story. The available data is unreliable, a prominent concern of criminal justice advocates. On balance, I think it's likely that all of these crime trends from, uh, you know, sort of petty theft and organized shoplifting rings all the way up to various categories of violent crime um, have, on balance, been blown out of proportion by people with an agenda, either to uh, get more eyes on their content um, or to get more funding for institutions that they prefer, like police. Critics worry that the story is not so straightforward. Regarding theft in its stores, the CFO of Walgreens himself said in a call with investors in January 2023, You know, maybe we, we cried too much last year when we were hitting numbers that were 3.5% of sales. The revelation has some onlookers casting doubt on the true magnitude of the issue. Despite disputes over data, the crisis has given rise to legislation like the Inform Consumers Act. CNBC spoke to retailers, trade associations, asset protection professionals, and criminal justice advocates to dive deeper into the much more complicated, murky issue behind those clear, locked plexiglass panes. Theft rings that scout, plan, and execute high-value heists. Three people were arrested. All are charged with robbery. Our investigators seized more than $3.8 million worth of stolen goods. The National Retail Federation and Retail Industry Leaders Association, two of the leading groups in the retail space, have all pointed to retail crime as a growing issue. Just listen to two executives from these organizations talk about it. It's become a significant problem uh, from both the habitual offenders who are stealing every day, have 50 to 70 encounters with law enforcement or uh, retail security personnel. And then the organized retail crime rings um, are very sophisticated. Retail theft is not just impacting the retailers themselves. It has a trickle-down effect that will impact the consumers, whether that's store closures, increased pricing. The definition of ORC varies by jurisdiction, but the Department of Homeland Security defines it as the association of two or more persons engaged in illegally obtaining items of value from retail establishments through theft and or fraud as part of a criminal enterprise. The NRF estimates that in 2021, ORC cost retailers an average of $700,000 per $1 billion in sold goods. I've been doing this for 32 years, and I can honestly tell you we've not seen anything to this degree in the past. Uh, we saw a, a large uptick probably about 10 years ago, and then again five years ago, and then really during the pandemic, we saw a massive increase. And it's also important to note that these numbers are COVID numbers, um, so they're outliers when you're looking at data. Crime investigators' concerns run even deeper than theft. Homeland Security investigations, uh, the FBI, they're finding more and more evidence that organized retail crime is linked to other significant criminal activity uh, to include human trafficking, child exploitation, drug and weapons trafficking. We're talking about something much bigger than that. On the side of retailers, billions of dollars have been poured into asset protection and loss prevention, or AP and LP for short, in the last several years. We have a team of investigators that work the organized retail crime problems. It's fair to say that we're investing millions of dollars, you know, across the chain into different types of solutions. Home Depot stores have seen a dramatic transformation over the years. 
along with hiring 150,000 employees between 2020 and 2022 to support its stronger ORC efforts, its anti-theft measures have become more technologically sophisticated. Everything from locked metal barriers to motion sensing monitors and locking smart carts. One of Home Depot's more advanced developments in LP tech is RFID tags. Lowe's recently launched Project Unlock, a similar technology to Home Depot's RFID tags. Basically not activating the product. The product will not function until it's been purchased at the point of sale. We think this is something that can really help curtail ORC, not just for Lowe's, but really across the industry. So that's the difference between a lot of the other solutions that we've tested in the past. They weren't cost effective. So it was expensive technology um, and you know that's gotta be absorbed somewhere. CVS and Walgreens have both implemented stronger measures in their stores. Aisles of plexiglass panes, cameras at self-checkout, and security guards monitoring activity in store. While the advances in AP and LP have been beneficial in stopping bad actors, it does come at the expense of the consumer shopping experience. These kind of anti-theft programs that they started, a lot of customers have been complaining about how that's kind of cut down on that customer experience. And it's bringing them to competitors where you can buy your toothpaste online, get it shipped to you within two days, and you don't have to kind of go through this frustrating process of going to a crowded store, waiting for an associate. It's not a good shopping experience, right? I don't even like going into a retailer and having to wait for somebody to unlock product to get it so I can go buy it. Um, so we've tried to stay away from that as much as we could, but in some areas we just were losing so much, it was not profitable at all for that category. We actually didn't even have product on the shelf to sell to our customers. As investments in AP and LP continue, retailers are forced to grapple with newfound customer inconvenience as physical and technological barriers evolve. So billions of dollars are being lost, cutting into retailers' bottom line. Media coverage around the issue ran rampant in 2021. And while advocates of the issue have painted an alarming picture, the other side, criminologists, civil rights organizations, and criminal justice educators, are warning that the story is not so straightforward. For starters, shrink does not solely account for instances of crime. It includes inventory that's lost, damaged, or stolen by employees, and even vendor and administrative error. Um, retailers are going to be going shelf by shelf and actually counting items that they have, checking it against the items that they sold, and the difference is the shrink number. But what happened to those items is unclear. It's not like when you're walking out of Target with detergent, you're saying, hey, I'm stealing this detergent. Nobody actually knows if that detergent was stolen, if it was damaged, or if an employee stole it. At every step of the way, uh, we have the potential not only for inaccurate reporting, but also for motivated reporting, where various actors in the system may have reasons why they would choose to make the numbers look bigger or smaller than they are. And so it's, I think it's fairly clear that we just don't have precise figures when it comes to all kinds of criminal justice statistics, including here, uh, uh, retail loss through theft, through theft. By some numbers and categories, the asserted rise of retail crime does ring true. Organized retail crime has risen. Busts have turned out in the millions, which largely account for the $94.5 billion number retailers and trade associations point towards. It's important to note that organized retail crime is absolutely a concern and that there's a lot of misconceptions about it. Um, these smash and grab robberies are not actually the biggest part of this. Um, it's big transnational crime organizations that are getting involved with organized retail crime because it's way less risk for way higher reward. While ORC has increased on a surface level, the data gets confusing when you really get down to it. The definitions for organized retail crime and the categorizations that fall under it vary in different jurisdictions. In some states, organized crime can just mean a conspiracy between two people to steal from a store. For this reason, doubt circulates around whether all of those instances were truly part of ORC rings. While retail crime in real numbers has increased, the shrinkage rate has remained largely the same over the past few years. The first logical place to look is the data, but as we've seen so far, that is a complicated can of worms. Skeptics on the rise of retail crime alike have pointed out the main issue. The methodology is inconsistent. 
making the interpretation of any and all data available doubtful. The idea that there's, you know, somewhere there's this kind of central database of, of relevant figures all the way down to um, a, a question as challenging as, you know, how many times, um, uh, you know, do our stores uh, victimized by, by shoplifting or by organized shoplifting rings? We just don't have that data. Let's dig deeper. If we look at the trade association numbers, they cite increases across the board through surveys. The NRF, for example, conducts yearly surveys, but they do not disclose who exactly participates in them. This data is qualitative, not quantitative. It asks the opinion of LP and AP leaders whether or not they have observed rises in different categories. And that's an issue because perceived increases are not the same as quantitatively proven increases. They're seeing a huge uptick and shrink, and then they're kind of looking at what's going on in the rest of the criminal justice environment, um, some kind of criminal justice reform laws that have taken place in big cities like New York, and, and they're also seeing media reports about big smash and grab robberies, and they're kind of saying, well, since we have a big increase and in shrink, it's most likely crime related rather than something else. Um, you know, did employees drop 10 more jars of pickles this year than they did last year? You know, what in the environment has changed that would lead to more pickles being dropped on the floor, for example? And the one common denominator that they can find is a shift in criminal justice, uptick in crime overall, and a shift in how cr in criminal justice reforms. Even looking more broadly at data from the FBI, data which, in all fairness, is only a partial picture with only 60% of agencies reporting. There have been decreases in crime as a whole, in some cases even historic lows. When asked about how data is gathered, Rila struggled to answer. How is data gathered? How do you go about you know, measuring retail crime? From you know, a, a retailer perspective, the way that they're organize, uh, uh, calculating uh, organized retail crime and the impact that it has is is you know they're when they uh, this is this is a tough one Jade this is a tough one for me retailers Home Depot and Lowe's on the other hand were adamant the data was sound I can tell you that in our world we know that crime is increasing we see it every day in our stores our internal information shows us that that's on a year over year basis growing at double digit rates and we document. Um, every single incident that is observed at any point in our stores. We can quantify um, very specifically what our losses are that are attributed to specifically organized retail crime. Some doubt has circulated even among retailers themselves, calling back to Walgreens CFO James Kehoe's statement in January 2023. On a national level, the story repeats itself. Annual government surveys from the Bureau of Justice Statistics show no recent increase in the U.S. violent crime rate. In fact, there have been historic lows. If we want to get more specific, violent crime has risen, which is an observed trend from retailers, but only marginally. But since violent crime is more dramatic and is most commonly seen in media coverage, the perception is skewed. It's easier to believe the problem is much more dramatic than it actually is, when you're looking at the worst case scenarios. Law enforcement officials in this country are massively under-investigating and under-reporting certain types of crime, largely crime committed by wealthier people, corporate officials, etc., and significantly over-reporting in the media certain other kinds of crime, like retail theft and shoplifting. Now, if we zoom the lens out even further here, this issue with magnifying the nuanced reality of crime is a messy subject in a larger political context. It's another instance in a controversial ongoing trend. Americans tend to believe there is more crime than there is in actuality. In 20 of 24 Gallup surveys conducted since 1993, at least 60% of U.S. adults have said there is more crime nationally than there was the year before, despite the generally downward trend in national and violent property crime rates during most of that period. Certain people uh, have a uh, sort of a political agenda that they want to keep people in a state of fear uh, about crime rate. I think all of us have probably, most of us have, have, have been into stores where we see, um, you know, that they lock the doors and only let certain people in or they put certain products, uh, you know, behind plexiglass. How much of that represents a, a kind of a, a proportional and reasonable reaction um, to what we're seeing and how much of it is an overreaction I think is difficult uh, to say. Um, but it, it ties into this larger narrative. 
In 2022, the perception that local crime has increased is at a record high. So for criminologists and other advocates, their concerns are very real. The combination of retailers, law enforcement, and media hysteria emphasizing the issue is working, at least as far as garnering attention goes. The law has responded accordingly, which is its own tangled web of implications. A, a national problem. You're seeing the videos over and over again of individuals walking in stores all over the country, taking what they want and, and walking out. So far, we've established that interpreting the data is a mixed bag. And you might be wondering, why does this matter then? The more the retail industry lobbies and the more the media illustrates a problem, the more the government deems it to be an outright issue. It's estimated that nearly $15 billion in federal and state tax revenue is lost to ORC. Since products are sold illicitly, the applicable taxes from that transaction in a normal retail setting are not properly collected. And why does that matter to you? The average American family will pay more than $500 annually in additional costs due to ORC's effects. More than that, corporate cops and law enforcement will be granted more freedom to pursue the issue. And this is where the concern for individual privacy becomes more real. Increasingly, um, it's easy for a retailer to get information about um, you know, what we're doing in terms of shopping you know, in a brick and mortar store and <clears throat> online. And so it's not always easy to know as a customer how much information you're turning over to the people that you do business with. And neither is it easy to know how much of that information they may be turning over to law enforcement in an effort to combat uh, shoplifting, uh, theft, and other crimes that may or may not be real. The response by legislative officials and by law enforcement in the last several years has been deeply involved. Homeland Security Investigations launched Operation Boiling Point, a unit specially designed to combat organized theft groups, or OTGs, in October 2022. The Inform Consumers Act was passed in December 2022, which would require online marketplaces to verify the legitimacy of high-volume third-party sellers on their sites. The Combating Retail Crime Act was passed in October 2022. On the side of criminal justice advocates, they worry that some of the legislation surrounding this issue is insinuating a damaging perception. Increasing penalties for theft and arresting and prosecuting more people is the answer. They point to research that indicates higher rates of incarceration does not immediately equal reductions in crime. While this issue of retail crime runs its course, the level of credence among retailers, trade associations, lawmakers, and customers is a delicate one. It's not to say that it isn't an issue, but you also have to be skeptical about everyone's motivations for uh, lobbying around this issue. 